So now I'm going to start to go over a sort of longer set of phrases. I'm going to start in the pre-chorus of the song and do a bunch of specific variations that go that actually happen in a song. I sort of strung together a lot of kind of cool phrases into like a real, it's almost like a real section of the song. Um, what I might do is I'll, I'll play some of it first. In fact, I'll, I'll probably just play the whole section. And then I'll start to break it down into specific phrases and talk about the technique that's being used. And really, th this is a longer section of music. It's a really, really worthy section of music to learn because it's got a lot of the important phrases in this song. But you're going to have to probably break it down into little pieces and learn it in chunks. So one thing to help you is I have tabs for all this stuff connected to this lesson. I have uh, links below uh, that will take you to my website and to some other websites that I have linked to that will give you... Um, just give you a tab for all this. I host all the tabs for my lessons on songster.com. I highly recommend you use that because that'll help you kind of keep your head straight while you're trying to learn this whole section. Um, but as much as you can, take time, really learn each phrase, get it down, and then go on to the next one. The more you can break this up and feel like, okay, I accomplished something one phrase at a time, the more likely you are to get through it and really master it. All right, so I'm going to play the section I'm going to teach you first, and then I'll go over it in detail. So imagine we're sort of coming out of the first verse with, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. Here we go. So you can see there's a lot going on there. There's a lot of different types of phrases in there. So let's just start breaking them down a little bit at a time. First thing I want to talk about is playing the double stops in the first section. Basically all I did there was take the middle finger and the ring finger and play the B and the G strings, the uh, B and the E strings together. You know, I don't know that a guitar actually did this on the recording, but a lot of times the, this guitar is double tracked. So this kind of simulates the effect of two guitars and it's nice. And you can do this over almost any chord you play in this song. Because this open E string, it works pretty well over things, so just, you know. So basically all I did was play it over the first two, the first bar of this sequence. So I did the C, the G with the double stops. And this next phrase that's going to happen, it's going to mix up a lot of syncopated notes with with um with pinches with notes that are on the beat. So check it out. I'm gonna play kind of slow. It's over the it starts on the A minor. We've got an A minor seven chord with an open G string and the pinky up here. It goes three and four and see. I started. I played between the beats on the first half. Pointer. Okay, it goes. Pointer, ring, middle, pointer. Pointer, ring, middle, pointer. And then the second half it started ring, ring, middle, pointer. It starts on that pinch. And getting that pinch in the middle, because you gotta come at you're you're kinda making a snap from the pointer finger to the ring finger as you tra transition. You're going pointer ring. There's another little set of twists for you right there. See if you can work that out. And now, before the next show starts, let's enjoy an intermission. You'll find our snack bar. On the next bar, we're starting to look at doing a lot of hammer-ons. A lot of times he'll, you know, kind of hammer on and pull off of this C here over the C chord, or even over a bunch of other chords too, but over the C chord mostly. So first phrase he goes is one, two, three, four. Just hammering 
down to that C. So see if you can just get hammer, note, hammer. And then over the next chord, he pretty much plays the same rhythm, but there's no hammer. So it's over. So that whole bar is. And he'll do the hammer over the A minor chord too. So when you get to the D with the F sharp and the bass, it does a longer melody. It goes hammer to the first fret, but then you also have to use the pinky to get up here to the third fret. So. And sort of after those phrases, if the main rhythm is ba, 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 and it's in that part of each chord that the hammer occurs, uh, what he adds in is an extra note, you know, the um, the pointer finger sort of between the last two thumb strokes. So it, if you put the whole pattern together, pointer. Here, I see how that pointer finger fills in the last thing. So that's the next bar. It kind of gets you used to doing hammers a little bit more with some different patterns. And now, before the next show starts, let's enjoy an intermission. You'll find our snack bar. Uh, the next phrase that happens is a, um, it starts to integrate a lot of those snap phrases that we had before. And there's some sort of funny runs over the D chord. So let's check it out piece by piece. If I play the whole phrase, it goes. That's those next two bars. First phrase is just this, you know, that sort of snap phrase I showed you in the very first section of this lesson. And to get into the next part, you have to kind of play the middle finger twice in a row. You have to go, yeah. See, there's a bunch of really quick sort of those sort of things going on to make this melody work, because the melody goes, just goes, and that's over the pattern, so it goes, there you go, na 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 na, one more time. Kind of a neat little phrase that happens over the D chord, but it takes a little bit of getting used to to get that because the the middle finger has to repeat twice. It has to go D D D, and then you have to go pointer middle pointer kind of quickly. So see if you can work that in. And now, before the next show starts, let's enjoy an intermission. You'll find our snack bar. Next part of it over this E minor chord, it starts with that same sort of right hand phrase. It's exactly the same snap pattern you had at the beginning of the last bar over the G chord. So, so nothing fancy there. One thing that changes here is that the thumb really briefly does another Travis pattern. Instead of just doing top, bottom, top, bottom, it does a middle string there. It does the E string, the D string, and then the A string and the D string. So it does that snap and then hits the A string, second fret of the A string. So see if you can grab that little moment there. After that... And now, before the next show starts, let's enjoy an intermission. You'll find our snack bar. This is a funny little phrase that he throws in here. The trickiest part is that he's gonna do a hammer, and when you hammer the note, you also have to play the ring finger at the same time, which is tricky to coordinate at first. The phrase looks like this. So we're kind of doing that other Travis pattern. But this time when you play on the A string, you hammer the B. And then his first beat, you sort of snap up to this. You go. And on the second part of the beat, when you do, when you hammer, you play with the ring finger as well. So it goes. 
So you kind of hand up that hammer hitting at the same time as the ring finger. And then there's that last note to fill in the phrase. So you see, there's a couple of tricky variations in there, but you're, you're going to see they're going to be very valuable as you get more into this stuff. And now, before the next show starts, let's enjoy an intermission. You'll find our snack bar. Next phrase. Next phrase is just sort of a, another pattern that he sort of inserts over this chord, which kind of mixes the syncopated notes with snaps, with two snaps in a row. So the pattern goes like this. You're playing over the C sequence, but you... The first two notes that happen are the middle and the pointer finger kind of between the thumb notes. So it's thumb, middle, thumb, pointer, syncopated. And then when you do the next chord, it's thumb snaps with, uh, thumb, uh, thumb pinches with the ring, and then with the pointer finger. So it's pinch ring, pinch pointer. Pinch ring, pinch pointer. So it's syncopated, pinch, pinch, syncopated. get that pattern down and that's going to happen over the first three chords it's going to be and then when you get to this D transition here it's another phrase over the D chord it goes like this check this out there's a hammer right on the top right on the first thing So after the hammer, it's all syncopations between thumb bass. And the trickiest part here is it leads to a pull off when you get to the G chord. Getting that transition is quite tricky, I found. You gotta almost have this finger go down at the same time this is pulling off, which is a little tricky to coordinate, so watch that moment right there very carefully. Pull off. All right. So, next part, we can come out of this pull-off. So in a lot of ways, this is all stuff we've seen before. Um, this rhythm with the pull-off is the same as the rhythm that we had in the last phrase where we were playing. So in that sense, it's the same, but we do the pull-off. It's actually the same D phrase that we had a second ago. So you kind of insert the D phrase you did you know, into this section, and then you kind of put it in the middle of the section. Here you go. Yeah. D phrase. But now when you do this E minor chord, you do the pull off into the E minor chord. And as soon as this pointer finger pulls off, you have, to get, you have to get the middle finger here on the second fret of the D string, and as soon as this pointer finger pulls off, you have to get it down here to the second fret of the A string in order for this phrase to work. Because you remember from the last phrase we had E, D string, and then you play on the A string. So if there's no finger there, it's going to be an open A string, which is going to be kind of weird. So you go pull off, place the finger. You know, this might seem kind of pedantic now, but you're going to find in the advanced lesson we're going to do a lot of finger style improvisation stuff. And being good at this sort of motion, like you know, finding a melodic note and then replacing a finger into a chord, getting used to doing those kinds of phrases is huge because otherwise it's really easy for your flow to break. So, so here we have um, this whole phrase that I've done so far, starting from where we came out of the G with the pull off. part of that bar is just it still has that hammer on except this time when you hammer you pinch and then hammer so you see the, the relationship between the fingers on the right hand and the left hand is different and it's important to practice both because you know it, it, it basically if you haven't practiced 
usually playing a hammer both with the right hand fingers and kind of between them. It's just the same as the coordination with the fingers on this hand. It's, it's hard to play in practice unless you've actually sat down and worked out the combination. So that last part of this bar is, you see the, the ring fingers kind of just playing a bunch of weird syncopations between things. It goes, uh, 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 uh. So that's the last part of that bar, and then that whole phrase just from the G with the pull off. Here we go. So it took me quite a while to get that whole phrase locked in, but once you get it locked in, it's you're gonna see it's really it's opened up a lot of possibilities for you. And now, before the next show starts, let's enjoy an intermission. You'll find our snack bar. The last section I want to play in this in this whole little lesson that I have here, we'll call it a lesson, is is a, is a sort of a weird, um, it, it's a more unusual kind of syncopation. I would almost call it an isorhythm. You know, I mean, isorhythm is a really, really old word for, um, for a technique they used in the 11th century, but I'm finding that you know a lot of these sorts of phrases are showing up in Travis picking music, so I'm gonna kind of use the word isorhythm for this part. So what happens in this section is you go back to the C pattern, and the thumb's going, doing its thing, and the main thing that you hear, there's a couple ways to play this, but the main thing that you hear is the ring finger playing on this, you know, and this note under your pinky, third fret of the E string, but it's kind of playing in a lot of sort of dotted quarter notes. It's, it's sort of a short three beat note that ends up kind of splitting up the beat a lot. You know, because the, the thumb's going in eighth notes. And you add an extra little sixteenth note to the length of each pulse in the ring finger. And that makes it have a weird offset with this pattern. Check it out. And you know, there's a couple ways to memorize phrases like this. What I tend to do is I just tend to start the thumb pattern and really just try to play through it as far as I can get without getting lost. Because if you try to memorize these, just like you know, in your head on a paper, you can do that. For some people, it might be helpful, but often it's not very practical. And the important thing is that this really gets in your muscle memory. These are very any sort of phrase that's going to use an isorhythm like this. That's like a different sort of a different rhythmic pattern that sort of overlaps two rhythms like this. They start to get so complicated that trying to memorize them from a page becomes less efficient than just kind of using your muscle memory a lot. So what I would do is I would just start this thumb pattern. As soon as you get back to the top of the cycle here, just play the first note with the ring finger, and then you just realize you want to start to go, you want to go one two three one two three one two three one two three. If the, if these notes are one two one two one two one two one two one two one two, it's going to be one two three for the ring finger. So you go one two three one two. Uh, here, excuse me. One more time. Here we go. Uh, and one two three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Wow, all okay. right. See how it's tricky? All right, here we go, one more time. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Ooh, wow, it is really tricky. Okay, so I'm just gonna say, this is what it's supposed to be like. When you're just learning this exercise, if you only get past the first couple of beats, and then you have to stop, that's okay. That's usually what I do. I'll just go. See, now I've got that part down. I'm gonna stop, make sure I got that. And then see if I can add one more. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now see, and what I don't want it, those shouldn't be together. So I gotta go back and one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, yeah. See, when I change chords, I can remember just to get me through this part that that ring finger comes right after the thumb. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 there we go. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna. Right, one, two, three, ah. Uh. Uh, 
and now I'm in the groove and I got it. And you'll find that once you've done this a little bit, once your fingers start to get used to the relationship between the ring finger and the thumbs, then you can start to, you know, it's no big deal. Even, I mean, overlaying it with the chords might be tricky, but I found once my right hand gets in the groove, my ears kind of take over what my left hand is doing and it's no big deal. But you really want to take as much time. You see how I really broke down those first couple of first couple emotions going into the pattern and really made sure I knew what the relationship was between the fingers. If you really take the time and break it down like that, then even kind of a weird cross rhythm like that will eventually become an easy muscle memory and it'll work out just great. So the thing that happens, I'm pretty sure what happens on the album when they play this is, although you really hear that ring finger, that's where it's gonna get real fancy, it's not just the ring finger that's playing. What's actually happening is a three note pattern. It's going ring, middle, pointer, all in a cascade. It's going all over the Travis pattern in the same count. So the Travis pattern is going on and you hear the ring finger because it's the high note, but really what's happening is ring, middle, pointer, ring, middle, pointer, ring, middle, pointer, ring, middle, pointer, ring, middle. Pointer. You see, and that's going on over the chords. I, I don't really think I even learned this trick. I didn't really get so good at that pattern by doing this song. I actually worked on a song called 1952 Vincent Black Lightning. I was kind of messing with this pattern, but um, it's a very like it, it does happen in this song. Um, I'll try to show you the specific phrase that he uses to get this in there, and um, yeah. So as he's coming out of the last variation that I showed you, where is? coming out of that E minor chord with the hammer. As he's coming out of that back into the C pattern, he starts to overlay over these chords. Check out how I do this. He starts with this phrase. Ah, excuse me. And then when he gets into this bar, when he gets to the A minor chord, he plays the first bass note and then as soon as he hits that second bass note, he's into playing da, da, da. So coming out of this. Yeah. Let me get a good start into this. And it starts right here. And he keeps going. When he gets back to this A minor chord, it's almost like he's gonna start again. Here's the first thumb and then starts the pattern again there. So you see, when he gets to the A minor chord, what he's doing is just giving the first thumb pattern and then when he hits the second bass note, sort of starting the thumb pattern again, he sort of breaks the pattern and resets it for just a second. So you play that whole thing again, starting from coming out of the E minor phrase. Uh, here we go. do the same thing with the arpeggios, with the little cascading arpeggios. So it's just qu quite a bit trickier, but very cool if you get it. it looks sort of like this. Uh, Ooh, one more time. Um, that's the trickiest phrase that I found that they actually play on the record. Um, that's just, uh, that's, that's just playing patterns. That's got your fingers really sort of locked in these positions. The next thing I really want to go into is the solo. As you start to get into sort of loosening up where you're just sort of, your thumb sort of goes on autopilot. And then you start playing a lot of melodic phrases over it. 
the next video I'm going to go into all those variations where he'll add special melodic phrases. Uh, we started a lot of that now, but I'm going to really go into the more advanced ones and then the actual solo that he plays, uh, which will require something of a mode change for the hands, but it starts to get like extremely cool at this point. So stay tuned for that.